Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Assalamu alaikum, my dear students. Welcome to your uh, eighth class, speaking skills. And uh, hopefully that you have done all the exercises I have given to you for the last weeks. And uh, very soon we will start. Uh, you can actually log into your blackboard and start the discussions with us. Uh, today, in our AC class, I have decided to have a review for chapter 1, two, to the major points of chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5, and 6 as well. So, um, these chapters um, have had major points, and I want you to focus on these major points, okay? Uh, the other points are necessary, but uh, this is kind of a review, a quick review for chapter 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. First of all, in our chap chapter 1, we have talked about the sound of it and how to understand intonation, التنغيم, in taggy questions, right? And we say, we often in a conversation with a sentence that includes a tag question. We add a, ta uh, a tag to a sentence and it becomes a question. So in a conversation we often use sentences, right? So these sentences may, inc uh, may consist of a tag question. We add a tag uh, to a sentence and the sentence becomes a question. Our voices, what well, I want you and to understand that we have talked about this rule. Our voices goes up on the tag if we are not sure about the answers. Okay? And it becomes a real question. So, will you do it quickly? Want you? So here, this is actually a real question. You want, you're waiting for an answer, right? And also, we said our, when our voices goes down on the tag, if we already know the answers and are making small talk, okay? So the purpose of this one, John and Mark aren't English, are they? So. As you can see, on the t intonation of the tag question is falling down. So, once the intonation of a tag question goes down, th th this is unreal question. It's called unreal question. What is the purpose of the unreal question? Is there a goal to use it? Yes, that's to make a small talk. So, we have talked about the uh, intonations and tag questions on page, uh, I guess, in the first chapter, in the first pages, uh, in the first chapter. So hopefully now, you have got the whole idea, you have understand or understood how we use intonation and tag questions. So please focus on this uh, topic and try to understand it by doing more exercises. Also, we have talked about common expressions in English conversation. So, we actually put ourselves in different situation and then we have used some expressions, uh, some helpful expressions. These helpful expressions are helpful. They are called helpful because they help us to introduce someone. They help us to in a conversation. They help us to express thanks. Also to give an apology. As you can see in this chart, we have different situation. And I want you to understand every single situation and its responses. For example, if you want to introduce someone. For example, excuse me, I'd like to meet... I'd like you to meet my friend. Oh, this is Amar, a friend of mine. 
have you met Amar? So the response is the other person should say, nice to meet you or glad to meet you, pleased to meet you. So you need to smile. So this is the, the, the best response and the common response in the American and British street. So you need to use these responses when someone introduces another person. If you want to end a conversation with the same person, you can use these expressions. Again, and we have talked about this. So I want you to memorize all these or most of these expressions, all of them, and understand them. Okay, so if you want to end a conversation, you can say, well, I had got to run. Or goodbye, see you later. Maybe on Friday or whatever, have a good day. Usually they say, have a good day, have a good weekend. Okay? And sometimes they say, keep in touch, talk to you soon. Uh, it's been good seeing you. Uh, I gotta go now, but I'll see you, or call you. So, usually, I, uh, people used to see, used to say, have a good day, have a good weekend. Okay? So this is how you can end some of the expressions that you can use to end a conversation. Also, we have some expressions, uh, how, how, how to make thanks, like thank you, how thoughtful, appreciated. The responses should be, you're welcome, do not mention it. I am very, uh, also, finally, we have talked about how to give an apology, how to apologize, how to apologize. I'm very sorry, excuse me, or excuse me, forgive me, it was my fault. So the responses should be, no problem, that's okay, that's all right, and not worry about it. So do not mix these responses with these, okay? You need to be careful. So when you speak, when someone speaks to you using these expressions and wants to express things, you need to use these responses. If someone apologizes, you need to use these responses. So do not mix between these responses. This is my point. So hopefully you also got the whole idea of how to use these common expressions in different conversation situations. And moving from that topic to another, we have also talked about how to give an advice. So as you can see, all of these actually uh, are situations. All or most of what we have taken are situations. I put you in different situations and each situation has a story. Sometimes you need to thank someone, a story of thanking, sometimes a story of apology, and now a story of advice, how to give an advice. And as you can see here, should, should not, ought to, or always should be followed by simple form of the verb to make a, or to give an advice. For example, if someone is sick, you should advise him, right? So you should say, you should go to the, you should, you should go. Then have a simple form of the verb. You should go to doctor. Okay, you should go to doctor. You should go to doctor. Hadi Aydan is a sentence, or uh, this is a whole sentence, ha, ha, is an advice sentence. It's an advice. Also, we have other expressions that we can use to make suggestions and advice. Okay? Uh, also, we have talked about how to give a suggestions, how to make a suggestion. For example, it might be nice if you go to the doctor. So this is a way how to give suggestion. Why didn't you study hard? Why didn't you fix the car? 
why don't you buy a house? So you are making suggestions. If I were you, I would buy a new one or a new shoe. So you're making suggestions now. So please try to put yourself in such situations. Just put yourself and imagine someone else or maybe talk to yourself and try to advise yourself, try to make a conversation with yourself if you don't find a partner, if you don't have a linguist partner or a language partner. Although you can use Facebook to start these small conversations with the students in different universities. So once you use your Facebook, just go try to add uh, some people from different cultures, maybe from American universities or whatever, or maybe between yourselves, among yourselves, you can make a short conversation. Okay? Uh, so this is what we have, what we have had for the giving advice and how to make a suggestion. We've also talked in one of the chapters about reductions how to use reductions. Reductions help you to compress the words together to make the language fast. So when you reduce the words, when you reduce the pronunciation of some words, you are actually speaking like natives. So, whenever you reduce words together, some words or some phrases together, you are actually speaking like natives. And here we have uh, discussed different kinds of reductions through this semester. We have also differentiate between the long form and the short form. As you can see in the first sentence, she made a lot of her friends. If we make a reduction, you should say, she made a lot of friends. She made a lot of, lot of. He had lots of a problem. He had lots of a problem. He had lots of problem. He wasn't able to relax. He wasn't able to relax. To, to, to relax. Could you help me with this? Could you help me with this? Could you help me with this? I will see you later. I'll see you later. You? Yeah. Do you know her? Do you know her? Do you know her? Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Do you know him? Okay. I was hurt and angry. I was hurt and angry. Without saying and. I was hurt and angry. That's incorrect. You should say I was hurt and angry. I was hurt and angry. Okay. So hopefully the, the, this one is uh, clear now. So try to say out these reductions, try to do some of the practice and try to uh, do it again and again, okay? The, the more you're doing crisis, the more uh, exercises, sorry, the more you're doing exercises, the more the informations will get us stick to your mind. So uh, try your best, please. Also, uh, we, we, we had actually uh, kind of uh, an advice in a normal or fast speech, you will hear reductions of some words. Okay, this is what we have said. For, for instance, one, two sounds buena. So, learning to understand reductions will help you become a better listener and a better speaker. That's why I used to give you example, uh, you know, exercises, um, many exercises about and reductions. That's why I have focused on the reduction uh, uh, lessons. Also here, uh, you can hear the difference uh, of these uh, long forms and short form and the CD1. 
you can go to track 12 and 13 on your textbooks, but that's fine. I'm going to also uh, to speak them out now. However, you need to remember that all of these reductions are only used in spoken English. You can't use them in writing. It's incorrect. Okay, let's start with the first one. Do you have any pets? Do you, do you have any pets? What's your name? What's your name? What's your name? Does this bus go to Geary Street? Does this bus go to Geary Street? Gotta, gotta. لاحظوا ما حكيت go to. Gotta. هيك في الإنجليزي بتنحكى. لكن تكتب go to. لكن تحكى gotta. Do you want to see the kitchen? Do you want to see the kitchen? Do you want it? Do you, do you, do you want to see the kitchen? And you will see it. Yeah, حكينا. Do you want to see the kitchen? Do Okay. يعني هذه ليست بمعزل لابد أنها تكون بهذا الش بهذا الشكل عندما تحكى. You have to have exact change. You have to. لاحظوا. You have to. You have to have exact change. مش you have to. لاحظوا. With the long form, you spend, you consume time to speak the whole sentence. With reductions, you you're saving time. لاحظوا. With the long form, you say, you have to have exact change. You have to have exact change. You have to have exact change. Take five minutes. You have to have exact change. It takes long. Shorter time. You have to have exchange change takes actually shorter time. So please, I, I will list all of these reductions now and try to speak them out. Okay. Uh, this review will help you to focus on the major points that we have taken uh, during the semester. Okay. Uh, also, we have learned the language that we can use to ask for a clarification. Clarification is the noun of clarify. Clarify to make something clear. So, if you don't understand someone or some points, or maybe if you don't understand me, it's important to ask for clarification, whether by email or Blackboard or just to meet me or call me on the course mobile, right? Here are some questions that you can use to ask me for a clarification if you don't, for example, understand reduction. So what should you say? You should say, excuse me, could you repeat that again? How was that again? How was reduction again? Could you repeat what we have said about reductions? How do you spell the reduction? So all of these questions are common questions that you need to use when you ask for clarification. So please also have a look at this part of, uh, 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 this, uh, part of the uh, lessons we have um, taken, okay? Also, we expand our sound of it to understand intonation, any questions with or. Before that, we discussed the intonation in taggy questions. Right? We said there are two kinds of questions with a word or, or yes, no questions, and either or question. In yes, no question, the answer is yes or no. The speaker's voice goes up two times. Two times. Would you like coffee or tea? The answer, yes, please. Uh, no, no, sorry. Would you like coffee or tea? Would you like coffee or tea? Would you like coffee or tea? لاحظوا صوت الكافي والتي جاء متساوي. Would you like coffee or tea? Yes, I please. لكن in either or question, the answer is one of the two items from the question. The speaker's voice goes up on the first item and down on the second item. لاحظوا. Would you like coffee or tea? Would you like coffee? or tea, tea please. So you need to pay attention to the difference between intonation and yes no question and either or question. With yes no question, 
Would you like coffee or tea? Would you like coffee or tea? تصاعد الصوت. لكن إذا كان سؤال تخير either or, would you like coffee or tea? ف we have different intonations. So please understand these rules because they are important for you to use them in your speaking uh, uh, speaking skills. In one of the chapters also, we have talked about how to give or to express an encouragement. For example, if you listen to someone or to a storyteller and he or she retells a story for you, an exciting one, what should be your response? Wow, that's wonderful. Or maybe if you're listening to a horrible story, gosh, is that really? This is what we call also interjection. Interjection. And this is parts, one part of, uh, one part of parts of his speech. هذا ما نسميه interjections. يعني مثلا استمعت له قصة جميلة مثلا وعجبتها. يقول wow that's wonderful. لكن قصة مخيفة. Gosh, is that really true? So if you look at my facial expressions, الملامح الوجه تتغير. And also the intonation of the voice is changed. وأيضا درجة الصوت تتغير. فهذه الشكل مع الصوت بتغير حسب الموقف. هذا ما نسميه interjection. Okay? And this is one of the part of the speech. Interjections. Cool. So please pay attention to the language that you can use. These languages give you, actually add to your personnel, different common expressions that you can use in your daily English, in life, in, in, okay, in, in, in the real life. Also, one of these skills that we have learned is how to talk about your future plans. For example, all of you may be our third or fourth year student, and, or maybe second year students, and someone asks you, what are you going to do after graduation? You need to use either be going to verb, like I am going to, I'm going to go to college, I'm going to teach at school, or you can use the verb, to, verb well to talk about the future. I will go to the governmental sector. I will work in the governmental sector. Lakin, what is the difference between going to a well? Going to, you're sure about what you are going to do. Lakin, well, you are unsure. Okay? So, we use going to when you already, when you have already decided what you are going to do. Lakin, with will, you have not decided yet. So this is the only difference between the two. Also, we have talked, uh, we have taken more expressions and reductions. Uh, let me read, uh, just look at the chart and let me just read it so quickly. What do you do? What do you do? What do you do? What are you doing? What you, what you doing? What are you? Salat, what you? What are you doing? What you doing? What kind of child who was it? What kind of child who was it? Kinda. What did you do? What did you do? What did he do? What did he do? What did he do? They used to love here. They used to. They used to live here. I'm going to buy a house. I'm going to I'm gonna buy a house. So hopefully you can now hear the difference between long forms and short forms. And in the middle right here, it explains to you the, what, what's happening in the reduction process. 
Also, uh, one of the skills that we have learned if, uh, during this semester is how to order a food, how to order food in a restaurant. For example, you and your colleague or maybe your friend went to a restaurant, maybe McDonald's, um, Burger King or whatever, and you want to order a food, a meal, right? So, what we usually uh, ask them is the menu or the order. Okay, so these are some of the expressions uh, that or phrases that we can use when ordering food in a restaurant. For example, a waiter may ask you, may I take your order? What do you recommend? What would you like? What's the special today? Would you like with that? How much is that? This is for the price. When you say how much is that, you're talking about prices. How is everything here? What's the soup of the day? So all of these actually are the main phrases, the language of restaurants, the language that you can use in a restaurant. Also here we have talked later on about how to give an advice. So this is kind of a repetition to our first lesson about how to give an advice using you should, you ought to, you had better, I advise you, I recommend that you. Okay, so all of these are some phrases that you can use to give an advice. And here we, we have talked about stress words with can or cannot. We said that after can, you can stress the object, the verb, sorry, you can, after can, you can stress the verb and the object saying that I can ride a bike I can I can ride a bike لكن with can't معنفي, you need to put stress can't ride a bike I can't ride a bike I can't ride a bike لاحظوا الستريس على can't ride a bike نفس الشيء he can ride a horse he can't ride a horse he can't ride a horse. So this is also one of the important lessons that we have taken uh, about the sound of it uh, and how to stress can, the verb, and its object. Also, we have also uh, uh, repeated uh, some of these uh, ex examples. We have talked about how to introduce someone and here is kind of the responses that we can use. How to end a conversation. Well, I got to run, for example, goodbye, see you later, Friday, have a good day, have a good weekend. And here is also how to express thanks. We have talked about this um, in the beginning, but this is kind of a repetition to what you have taken. Okay, and this is also uh, when you express thanks, thank you very much, that was kind of, uh, was uh, very kind of you, how thoughtful your response should be, you're welcome. Do not mention it. Also, we have taken an exercise about how to give an apology. An apology like, I am very sorry, excuse me, forgive me, it was my fault. And also, uh, in here, uh, you can give a response to such uh, examples like, no problem. No problem. That's okay. That's all right. Do not worry about it. In the reductions forms also, we have talked about the reductions forms a lot in the first chapter, in the second, in the third, and uh, in the fourth chapter. And here we have kind of an example to all what we have said about reductions. For example, do you have any pets? What is the reduction or the short form of this first sentence? Do you have any pets? You, it should become like here. And the sentence should be, do you have? Do you have any pets? Also, we said, what's your name? What's you? It should be, what's your name? 
What's your name? What's your name? Repeat after me, okay? What's your name? And here, where is the reduction? Go to. It should be. Gotta. Gotta. Does this bus? Gotta get a street. Do you want to see the kitchen? One, two. تصبح wanna. Do you wanna? Do you wanna see the kitchen? Some students, they make some mistakes when they use wanna or gonna. They say, do you want us to see the kitchen? That's incorrect. Then wanna, wanna is originally one, two, if you want to return it to the long form. So there, there is no need to use another two. So do you want to see the kitchen? Do you want to see the kitchen? You have to have exact change. This is the long form. حكينا إنه have to لابد إنه we reduce it to become have to have to you have to have and it becomes like this you have to have exact change you have to have exact change also we have here some long forms and one of the questions right here it asks you to give the short form of each one. We have explained all of these th stuff in th maybe two or uh, two times. So I want you now to help me to do this by yourself. I will do some of them like what do you do? What do you do? What do you? What do you do? What do you do? What you doing? 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 Okay. What kind? What kind of childhood was it? Mish was it? Was it? What kind of childhood was it? Did you? What did you do? What did you do? What did he do? Used to? They used to. They used to live here. They used to live here. I'm going to buy a house. I'm gonna buy a house. I'm gonna buy a house. Okay, and here we have also talked about giving advice. Please try to um, remember all of these. It's uh, actually, I want to add here, it's more important and more polite to use uh, expressions for making suggestions than to use an imperative notice. Um, here I have repeated this to focus on this. So I need you now in this slide, although it's repeated, to focus on the suggestions. And here in the second slide, it gives you an advice. Do you remember this advice? It's more impolite to use expressions for making suggestions than to use an imperative in huwa al-amr. فلا بد إنك تستخدم the tone of suggestion نبرة الاقتراح أكثر من نبرة الأمر. So notice, uh, and here we, it gives us an example. Get out and take an art class. This is less polite. لكن if you want to make it a suggestion, you should get out and take an advice uh, and take an art class. So here is more polite. It is more polite. Also, we have talked about the models. Please just go back to the models and try to um, uh, study them again. Also, we have used had better. We have talked about how to use had better to warn someone. You had better study tonight or you might fail the test. So you are warning him. Tahdir. You had better go home now or he will be in trouble. So had better give an 
a, a warning that something bad will happen if you if the advice is not taken if the advice is not followed also we we have talked about how to use should to offer advice and this is actually should here it gives us more clarification in this slide here it say it means it would be good idea if you do something lacking I am not warning you I'm going you an advice I'm saying that it would be a good idea if you do something you should eat something when you are hungry so this is an advice you should read a book and turn off the television you should stop being so loud you should have a party at the beach so all of these are uh, sentences offering some advices also we have talked about how to use could or might uh, and we said that they are more gentle than should they are more children ch gentle than should so uh, as you can see here after could might like should like should could and might uh, is follow are followed by simple form of verb simple form of verb okay and finally in the last six classes uh, we have talked about uh, some of the also new reductions that we need to pay attention to when we speak English and I want you to understand and memorize all of these reductions with a long form we say like right here she made a lot of her friends like in, in spoken English she made a lot of friends lot of friends two he had lots of a problem he had lots of a problem a short form he had the lots of problem lots of problem he wasn't able to relax he wasn't able to relax could you help me with this and the long form could you help me with this I will see you later you can the level I'll see you later I'll see you later do you know her do you know her careful as it's going do you know her do you know her do you do you know her do you know him careful as it's going do you know him do you know him I was hurt and angry I was hurt and angry لاحظوا في long form I was hurt and angry هذا في long form the written language like in spoken language you should say I was hurt and angry and angry we don't want to and so finally as we have talked and we have explained in details and we have repeated and reviewed the most and the major points of chapter 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5 hopefully that I have clarified most of the big questions so please do focus on them try to understand the reductions try to understand the situations and their responses they are very important the final exam questions, the final test questions are going to be similar to what we have taken. So you need to understand the situation and its responses. You need to understand the reductions, its long form, the reduction process and the short form. You need also to understand the intonation, intonation of the tag question yes no question either or questions 
If you have any question or any comment, just please try to contact me at my email a a l m a a n i at k f u dot a d u dot say. Some of you say we don't have time to contact you. You can you can actually uh, you can contact me anytime, day or night via email. Just I will try to respond as as much as I can because there are a lot of emails uh, I need to check every day. So please be patient until I respond back to you. I will promise that I will respond as soon as possible. Also, we will start our Blackboard discussions uh, and you should actually make some uh, thinkful and thoughtful uh, some thoughtful uh, comments and uh, hopefully that you have enjoyed the class today or the review today. Thank you so much. Wa assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.